I don't think we're going to see a Z90 or a smaller version of the Z9. I'm sure that you're going to see a Z50 Mark II or Z52. But I think on the pro side, we're going to see a um, Z80 or a smaller version of the Z8. And in my view, we need a Z80 in order to compete with the Canon R7 and the Fujifilm XS20. Priced around between... Uh, 1250 US dollars to 1500 US dollars. I think this is going to be a crucial spot for Nikon to fill up. Let's not forget also the A6700 from Sony. That's an incredible camera or its video counterpart or film counterpart, the FX30. I think there is a credible cap and um, you need a Z80 for that. The Z50 Mark II is probably going to be a different conversation coming at 999 or even 1,000 uh, and 100 US dollars. But here I'm looking at slightly higher price point, um, filling the gap between 1250 and 1500, more towards 1500 than towards 1250. And the way I see that these two cameras are different is that essentially uh, Z50 Mark II is going to be all the capabilities of the XP7, but on a sensor that's essentially the Z8 or Z9 sensor, but cropped in meaning it's going to be a 21 megapixel sensor but when it comes to and it could be a stacked sensor or not be a stacked sensor but when it comes to the z80 i think it has to be a higher megapixel sensor i think i'm looking at a 26 to 33 megapixel sensor because otherwise you could just use the z80 or a z8 or the z9 and crop in and you're going to get a 20 megapixel 21 megapixel image if you want a little bit more out of uh, your long lenses especially for wildlife and birding i think slightly higher megapixel count it going is going to be very very useful especially for people who has uh 400 2.8 or 600 f4 uh, you have enough resolving power even if the sensor is 33 megapixels and 33 megapixels is a lot honestly on any camera whether full frame or crop sensor so between 26 and 33 more towards 33 imagine shooting that with an f 5.6 prime lens or uh, even an f4 prime lens like a 600 f4 all right uh 400 2.8 and you crop in so the possibilities are a lot right you can really really reach the distance i think that's the uh, opportunity and yes i understand it could be higher than just 1500 us dollars but i think there is a gap i want the body to be around 550 530 grams not more than that uh, but should balance well i mean couple well with any of these long lenses because this i'm looking at uh like the second body when you need more reach in decent light on a uh, large lens of course seven to eight stop stabilization because you know it's a smaller sensor so there's more space within that uh, hole within the mount hole for the sensor to move around of course uh, and so eight stop ibis should be doable and so give us that and definitely the similar low light autofocus as uh, with the ZF, uh, you know, minus 10 EV at 1 f1.2 lens. Uh, honestly, the ZF autofocus in low light is incredible. The ZF autofocus in any scenario is incredible. Um, and in low light, it is really spectacular. Eye and subject detection in both photo and video modes, everything bird eye detection, bird eye detection, bird detection, animal, um, just like we get on the Z9 right now. And Coupled with that, give us insect autofocus. Why? Because the other area where you need to zoom in is really when you shoot macro. And when you shoot macro, if you have the ability to detect the insects, that's going to be a huge capability. Some of the newer Sony cameras have that. And I think for macro shooters, that's that's uh, really, you know, uh, it's, it's liberating, you know, honestly and it should have at least uh, 15 frames per second in uh, high burst shooting scenarios video capabilities you know 4k 60 uncropped uh, 4k 120 fps uh, maybe with 10 percent crop maximum so 
give us a you know 4k 120 minimal crop because it's already a crop sensor camera and most technology users are going to use a full frame lens so you know it's going to be already crop, crop, cropping in on a full frame camera so with that the crop should be minimal minimal at 10 percent uh, for 4k 120 for 4k 60 should be completely uncropped a full HD it should be able to do you know uh, full HD at 240p per second because you know um, you can always do a, do a lot you can actually go to DX mode and zoom in further and then do full HD 240 and you can do some amazing wildlife action video sequences and that's the uh, opportunity of course 10 bit 4 to 2 color all the way right and maybe a dual hss H uhs 2 card slot um but if it's a slightly bigger body then possibly a space for a safe express card as well just a thought i think a camera like this is very doable and if nikon pulls it off well and i think the kind of the way up look this is just my wish list right but if nikon comes out with a camera like this honestly I don't think anyone has a camera like that in the market right now. Not Fuji, not Canon, not Sony. And it's really, really a sweet spot. And I think um, people will buy it even if it's 700, uh, 1750 US dollars. Okay. Uh, I really think there's a serious market for this, uh, uh, for this camera. And of course, there is a serious market for the Z50. And um, we should talk about the Z52 on another video. So if you're new here and if you like some of these conversations, check out my other videos. I have more than hundreds or uh, hundred videos uploaded on my channel. I've been doing this for the last three years. And I'd like to grow this channel a little bit at this point. I'd like to reach 5,000 subscribers by the end of February. If you want to, by the end of February, if you want to help me out, subscribe, especially if you come back to this channel often or if you've just stumbled upon the channel if you're new here. I'm going to see you soon with another one soon. Bye.